Welcome to Winning Conversations, a new podcast brought to you by Heritage of Faith. It's Hannah here with... Hi, I'm Tanya. And today we're catching up with Pastor Alex Bonas, our youth pastor here at Heritage. We're going to talk about life, youth ministry, and all the things baby bonus. So many exciting things to talk about. Let's jump in and get the conversation started. So with all that being said, Alex, what were your early years like with your family growing up? Can you tell us a little bit of insight as to what young Alex was like? Yeah, um, young Alex, which I still say is Alex. um, (laughs) Of course, it's it's what molded you and shaped you. Yes, it's what made me as a kid I am today, even though I'm 27. (laughs) But um, I would say my childhood and growing up was a TV show. A TV show. Yes. I love that. Like, Family Matters. Family Matters? Just like that, with all the funny stuff. Was that like Urkel? That was Steve Urkel. Yes, I yes. loved Urkel. Oh, perfect. So, you, was, were you Urkel? I was a character. Okay. Don't know okay. which one, but I was one of them. <laughs> one of them. One of them. Um, we grew up in Houston, Pasadena. We call it Stinkadena because there's so many chemical plants there that it <laughs> oh, smells. I didn't know that. So we call it Stinkadena. I take my wife down there. And, and growing up in Houston, we lived in a two-bedroom, um, one bath. And there's seven of us all together. Wow. Mom and dad had their room, of course. And all five of us lived in the one room. Wow, that's amazing. And so being that, we had corners. We didn't have rooms. We had corners. This is your corner. This is your corner. This is my corner. But my spot was the floor. That was my corner. So growing up, we grew up close as a family. And we had a lot of stories. A lot of holes in the wall because of wrestling. I can't imagine. I mean, that many kids in one room. Boys and There's girls. Be all kinds. The yeah. Boys and girls. Um, one sister. She's the oldest out of all of us. And then, including me, there's four of us. So, of course. I have an idea of what that household looks like. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course, mom and dad knew. Carmen, that's my sister's name, was the first girl and the first child. So, she had favor a little bit. Well, and I bet she was so responsible, too. The first child and the first girl and all the younger brothers, like, she was probably very, like, mom. Was she a very, like, mom role model to you guys? I wouldn't say mom role model. I would say I would look at her and what not to do. Oh. Because. Oh. Um, went the other way. Went the other way because once, like, being one of the last um, siblings, I would look at my older siblings and see, oh, that's probably what I shouldn't do because they got in trouble for that. Yeah. So it was kind of was the other way, but we all love each other. We all joke each other. And even today, we're still laughing and joking. And we all kind of just grew up in the church and the ministry with that mindset because of mom and dad. And yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun growing up in Houston. Had a great childhood. Didn't grow up in the nicest area of Pasadena. Yeah. There would be drive-bys. There would be people throwing wow. beer bottles out of the car right when we're playing on the street. Wow. In broad day, like cars, people get stolen, bike. When I was 10 years old, my birthday, I just started, I just had my birthday. My birthday gift was a bicycle. Wanted it, so I got oh. a bike. I was so happy, but we didn't have any room to store it in the garage, oh. so we had to put it on the side of the house. Next day, bicycle was gone. Oh, man. Oh, oh man. Did you? Oh. I didn't cry. How old were you? 10? I was 10. Oh. I didn't cry. I was like, man, Pasadena's rough. <laughs> that was your thought as that a 10 That was my thought growing up as a 10 year old. This is rough out wow. here. Wow. Wow. And so that really shaped you and molded you into maybe being called into ministry? Or what's that story like? When did the Lord lead you and call you into full time ministry? I would say, um, like I said, mom and dad kind of just. I was raised in church. I'm a church rat. Know all of the scriptures. Life in the front row seat. Climbing underneath the pews when I was trying to play in church. Mom, dad, you know how the story goes. So I would say I kind of just growing up with it is just the only thing that I really knew was real. Yeah. And it's always it's what I always wanted to do. Yeah. Even in school, going to school in public school, especially, um, I would just carry my Bible every day because I knew this is what I'm called to do. This is what I feel like the Lord wants me to do, even if I'm the only one doing it. And our vacation as a family wasn't Walt Disney, it wasn't Universal, it wasn't going to Hawaii. Our vacation as a family was going to the Southwest Believers Convention. Praise God. In Texas, Fort yes. Worth. So yeah. that was our only time, it's like as a family, it was always at the convention center. So that Aww. has like a special place in my heart and I love going there. Yeah. So just watching them on stage in Super Kid Academy, just watching them like perform and just give the word and giving their all, it's just 
Like, I never wanted to leave because how great it was. Wow. And so I always wanted to do that growing up. I was like, I want to be like that one day. Oh, my. One day, so, I'm so Super like Kids that. kind of inspired yes. you in your future. That's amazing. Yeah, Hannah's smiling ear to ear. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. <laughs> Oh yes. my gosh! Because that was your that was so special to you guys. Because that was your family going together and having vacations. So it was like a retreat to you yes. and your and that's how we should all take it. We should all take right. Southwest as this is a spiritual retreat. You know, we're we're blessed that we get to get this word. Right? Yes. So true. Oh, that's amazing. So that really shaped. What about your heart for like students? I know you're the youth pastor here, so. What has the Lord done in your heart as far as for, like, the student ministries and your drive for them and, I don't know, your passion behind that? Was it all from Super Kids, or where did that special place um, at in your heart? I would say is when I was in ninth grade. I mean, obviously, I was saved, but I wasn't sanctified. Yeah. I want to be honest. <laughs> I was, for I was ninth saved, but not sanctified. In ninth grade, I was... Um, I was in school, and I just felt the Lord telling me to say hi to this one kid. Yeah. And so I did not want to say hi to him because this kid was that kid in the back of the room that no one talks to. Oh. If you talk to this kid, you're going to get made fun of. <laughs> if you were just by him, you're going to get made fun of. Like, I do not want to talk to this kid. And I remember the Lord just saying, like, hey, go talk to him. Wow. And I was like, uh, no, Lord, like, you got the wrong person. Go talk, tell someone else. And so, like, nothing happened. Then the next day, like, I got that feeling again, hey, go talk to him, just say hi. To say whatever, and I was like, no, nope, not gonna do it. I don't want to be made fun of. I don't want to yeah. open up that can. I'm just, I'm just gonna be Jesus over here in my corner. Next day came, kid didn't show up. Kid didn't show up again. Again, finds out, kid ended up suiciding. <gasps> no, oh, no. Yes. So, me not stepping up to what I should have done, just opened up my heart to wow. the love for the generation. Oh, I, oh, wow, Alex. It came That's out of powerful. a bad spot. I wish it never happened, but it really changed my perspective of who cares what they say about me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amen. What matters at this moment is this person's soul. Yes. If what matters is what, I don't know, like, Jesus got made fun of. Paul got made fun of. I was like, what, is, what are little names to someone's life? So yeah. since that incident, it's just been like, I don't care what it takes. I don't care if it's more money. I don't care if I get made fun of. I don't care if I lose friends over this. I'm going to give my all. I'm going to preach Jesus. I want to give him what I could give him and just have the Lord back me up on everything that he wants me to do. So that just changed my uh, perspective and passion of if I'm going to do this Christianity thing, I want to do it 100%. Amen. I'm not going to do it halfway. I'm not going to do it only when I'm at church. I'm going to do it the whole time. And since that moment when I made that decision, obviously I lost friends that— I thought we're friends because they couldn't just hang with the, wow, he's a real Christian. You don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. You don't want to do that. We used to do this all the time. I was like, I used to, but once I became all in, like, I can't do this. Yeah. Amen. And so I lost friends over that. But I would also say I made great friends. And there's a friend that I have. His name's Juan. And uh, he was going through some things. And I actually helped him because he thought about it. Hey, like, I just, like, he would tell me sometimes, like, I just want to end it. Mm-hmm. Just want to stop, and I just remember hearing that, and that kid came back in my heart, and I was like, "Like, no, we're not doing this again." And because I gave him Jesus, because I invited him to church, because I just loved on him, he ended up just like, quit, like he stopped drinking. Wow, praise and he God. just ended up one eighty. Just you know what? I love life. Life is fun, and that's only one person. And that person ended up was my best man at my wedding. Oh my goodness! Oh, that's How so, so special. it's just cool to see what God Aww. could do for you. Yeah, that's amazing. When you think about those types of moments in time when you get an opportunity to really change, to be an instrument used by God to change somebody's course on their life, what what is it that you want to impart in this next generation in a way that you're super passionate about? Like if you could get one thing across to this young generation coming up, what would you want them to walk away with? I would like to walk away with, I know this is like the most cliche answer that every Christian says, but it's really true. Like, the fact that Jesus loves you. And it's not like, oh, yes, okay, I know Jesus loves me. But it's like, do you really, like, Jesus, like, the Bible says we were adopted by Christ. When mom and dad had me, they had no choice to pick me. I just came because God gave me them. So God gave me two of them, and so they had no choice. But adoption is so beautiful because adoption is the parents are picking who they want. Mm-hmm. They're picking, I want this kid because I want to love him. I'm choosing out of all these people, I'm going to choose you. 
And that's what Jesus did for us. Out of all creation that he made, all the birds, the insects, every, even the stars that are so beautiful, he looked at us and said, I want to adopt you. Yeah. And so I just want the students to walk away with, you've been chosen. You weren't a mistake. You weren't unplanned. I don't care what they said, happy accidents, whatever. You were made for a purpose, and it was all out of love. Yeah. It was not out of obligation, and it was just the love of God that he just wanted to love on you and give you an opportunity to spread his love to the world. And so I just want the students to know that Jesus loves you in every way. But love, I think, are nowadays are the world's changed that to, it's, you have to love me for who I am. But that's the opposite of what love really is. Yeah. Right. Because me becoming a parent, if I see my daughter in the middle of the street and her car's coming, I'm not going to say, oh, well, I love her, so I'm just going to let her do her thing. I'm not, I'm not going right. to do anything about it. Yeah. See the car, but I just love her. I don't want to make her feel bad. I was like, that's not love. Love is going to shout and say, hey, get out of the street. Hey, get out. There's a car coming. Yes. That's what love is going to do. And I told the students, like, I, the biggest lie that I heard growing up was, Jesus loves me the way I am. It's not yeah. true. If Jesus loved me the way I am, then Jesus would have never had to come down and save me to get right. me to go somewhere else. Yeah. So I would just say the love of God is what I want to impart to these students, knowing that they are loved. And once they know they're loved, their identity all forms after that because yeah, right. now yeah. they've been loved by a father who really loves them because if you look at the statistics of the day it's like 87 percent of pregnant teenagers are from fatherless home um runaways 91 percent are from fatherless home because they don't have the love wow. of the father yes in their home but when if we could give that love to them a love that is a god love that's which is perfect i mean it would just change um, generational curses from alcoholism from pornography from uh, suicides, if they would just know that there is a person who really loves them, and his name's Jesus. That's awesome. I just proof in the pudding. My twelve-year-old thinks that you hung the moon when it comes to ministry. <laughs> so he may he may not always remember all of the things that are said or the lessons that are taught, but he knows when he walks away from when you're in the preteen class. He knows that he's loved and he understands. And I remember he would come home and say, I was like, what was church about? He's like, identity. And I was like, that's so <laughs> important. Here's why. Um, because they have to understand yes. who they are created to be and that they're so loved. So I think that is super powerful. But you did mention that you have a little baby girl and she is going to be born very soon. Will yes. you tell us about what that journey has been like? I mean, it's just starting, but you just recently got married. How long have you been married? Uh, not even, oh wait, it's been a year. It has been a year. One year. It has been a Woo year. Woohoo, newlyweds. We made a one year mark, uh, found out five months of being married, we were having a child. So that moved Aww. really quick. But we were happy. <laughs> <laughs> we were happy. And, and her name is going to be? Allison Juliet Bonez will be her name. That's so beautiful. So what has that beginning journey of parenthood been like for you? Um, in the beginning, I would think, I wasn't really focused more about parenthood but more on my wife and how she's feeling. Because first trimester, I would say <laughs> to all the husbands out there, it is a true sign of love when you are cleaning your wife's vomit off the floor <laughs> for the third time. In a day or third time in a week or third time? It felt like hours, but I know it wasn't really like that. <laughs> wow, wow. But it, I would think it was just like, it kind of was eye-opening to me at the first trimester was how much I really love my wife and how much I'm willing to serve her. And then growing, now passing that, looking towards parenthood, it's been exciting. I realized mom and dad were not as crazy as I thought they were. <laughs> really? It's yes. opened your eyes? It has opened like... my eyes a lot. I told as, uh, as an eldest, and I was like, realizing when I moved out of my house, I realized how smart my parents became. Isn't that that trajectory? You're like, yes. oh, you did have something. You did yeah. say that. That's why you told me to turn those lights off. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's been a blessing because me and Asenel both have amazing parents, spirit-filled, in the word of faith. So both of us have really good parents. So we asked them, of course, because we've never been here before, and we asked for what their wisdom is on this, how did they take care of this. And honestly, it's more exciting I'm not nervous. I'm not scared. I'm just ready for that baby to come out and just show her, like, the love of God. And I got excited when I built the crib. 
Oh, you built the crib. I built the crib, and it was so fun. Like that day, we just got done moving, so I was tired, but I was too excited not to like build it because the crib was right there, and I just wanted to do it. Had to do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I did it, and I was so just like, "Cute." It is getting real. Like I am gonna have a baby here. And I am going to be waking up, taking care of the baby, and just, it's, I'm excited. Yes. I'm excited. And I was okay with it being a boy at first. I wanted a boy because I knew how to discipline a boy. I knew, like, I've been spanked, so I know, like, be it's going to be a little okay. tougher. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'd be a little tougher. But growing up, I was raised not to hit a girl. And so, like, now that I'm going to be a dad, I'm like, this is a daughter. Like, I don't know what to do here. What's the Oh, playbook? you'll still pop her. She'll <laughs> Tell you right now, personal experience. She'll still get her little pin out. You can start by a little flick on the hands and then graduate to a pop, but it, it'll be the same. Like I said, asking for wisdom. Asking for wisdom. I've got a lot. So I'm, just I'm sure your parents have, have quite a bit of wisdom too, and it'll help you. And the Holy Spirit, He leads us and guides yes. us into all things, and He'll show you what's perfect for your family and your children and how to go about every single avenue, even when it comes to disciplining. Because I feel like that's a big one that the Holy Spirit's like, lean into me. I'll show you what to do because times change, ages yes. change, situations change as they grow, and you just got to pray and ask God, okay, Lord, what do I do with this, you know? And then you so. start all over when you have the second or third or fourth, however many you guys plan to have because each child is, is different. so different. Yes. Their personality <laughs> needs something different yep. to help them get stay on stay on track. Yeah. Right? So. I didn't have any problem. I don't have any problem with no. my boys. I spank them no problem. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> well, I understand. Girls Tilly are was really sensitive. So yeah. she started off with like flick her hand. And she's like, oh, I mean the most dramatic. <laughs> you flicked me. And now it's we're back into the popping That's stage. Back, so, back into the popping. Yeah. So the Lord will show you everything that you need to know regarding parenting. You guys will be amazing parents. I just hands that. down. Yes. That is going to be amazing. So we know that you had a faith journey in believing for this baby, even though it was not shortly after you got married. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay, yes. Um, in the beginning, doctors told uh, me and Azanel that we weren't able to have a kid. And immediately, me and Azanel knew, like, that's the curse, but we live in the blessing. Amen. So we know that um, Dr. Jerry Savelle preached about a prayer petition. And so we did that. We made a prayer petition, and we signed our names on it, believed exactly what we want, that we could have a kid. And that it's going to be amazing. It's going to be exactly what we want, down to the very detail. And we just started believing and standing on it. We would read it every day before we go to sleep. We would read that thing. And we just trusted God. Like, God, you know. We want a kid. Eventually, we want one. And so you're going to give us one. And so we did that. And people, we had money sewn into us. And someone gave us money. The mean as an L sat on it. We're like, you know what? Since we're believing for a child, we're going to bless a family that we highly um, look up to mm-hmm. and so we're going to bless their family with it because we're believing for a family yes so me and Azanel did that and I mean that seed produced real quick <laughs> as soon as you put it in the ground put yeah. it in the ground and it was like a month later <laughs> wow like a month later wow. God, God was like plan for this little yeah. girl yes oh my goodness but it was I would say it was so cool to see like no matter what circumstances it is like doctor said we couldn't do it mm-hmm. Obviously, and we went to doctors, and they were like, no, it's going to be hard. And if you do get pregnant, it's going to be a premature baby. The baby's not going to be fully be developed. So it might, might not make it. You might have a miscarriage and all these negative things. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, just stop talking. Yeah. Just stop For talking. For real. Yes. I was like, this is or not. Or you know my promise. That's <laughs> yes. right. I was like, this is not what I'm here to listen to. I'm here to listen to the promises. Like, That's your report, but I believe the report of the Lord. Yes, amen. And we just stood on it. It was just so cool to see how God made an impossible moment possible. Yes. And I and when we had the, we finally got our promise. We're like, yes, we're pregnant. And then me and Azanel sat there and were like, how are we going to pay for this baby? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I didn't, like I knew babies were expensive, but I didn't know they were that expensive. Yeah. So me and Azanel sat there, and Azanel at the time didn't have insurance, and we were just like, okay, well, we're just gonna believe, believe God. God, believe God again. We'll make another prayer petition. Praise God. And so we did that, and we just believed God, and we sown and we put and like Dr. J. Savell said, when you're in need, plant a seed. Yes. And so we planted a seed, and we just believed on it, and honestly. I, I mean, scripture is so true where you will not have room enough to store in your house is so true because yeah. we have been blessed beyond so much. 
Like, even this morning, someone decided just to clear out our baby registry this morning. <gasps> wow, what Praise a blessing! God. And like, There's provision around every <laughs> yes. decision. When you make it in the Lord, man, he's yes. so faithful. So what did the Lord do about, like, the insurance so situation? So the insurance thing, so this is so, this is so God, and I love it. So the insurance thing, as I know, I was working at a job at the time, and they weren't very um, helpful. They weren't very flexible, I would say. Yeah. And so it just pushed Azanel to get in another job. While Azanel was at that job, she hit a cap. They were only she was getting paid a lot more than anyone else, and she, they told her that she wouldn't be able to get more money because she couldn't get paid more than the executive there. Yeah. So Azanel being like, "Well, listen, I go to Glory to Glory, so yeah, I got to go somewhere else." And that's exactly what she did, and God opened up doors just for her, and she got the job that she needed which was staying at home. It's a job that she works from home Praise because God. she's pregnant. Yes. And it's flexible hours, and she can work it all on the laptop, and she only has to go out there one time a week. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And they have insurance. Oh, look at so that. So it was just yes. like, thank you, Lord. That's amazing. And, of course, like you get a pay raise a little bit there. Yeah, so that helped a course. lot more. It was a pay raise. So we were just seeing God do all these things in our life for this baby, and we were just in all of it. I'm just like, man, this baby is so blessed that she has stuff. Like, people are making custom things for her, and she's not even out yet. Oh, that's amazing. It's I'm, so fun. Yes, we're all excited to, to meet this baby. I know we're all anticipating that moment. So what's your all's vision for the future? What are you hearing and seeing from the Lord and your call to ministry for the youth over here? Our future is, honestly, I don't... Numbers, I really don't care about, but numbers are people kind of thing. But I just want souls. our team. Yes, the souls. I just want our team to know the vision is to love these students. It's yes. just to love them. Because nowadays, I don't think students are getting that love from their mom and dads, uncle, aunts, grandma, grandpas. I don't know. But our vision is to just show them love and just give them the love of Jesus, that Jesus gave all the ones who felt hopeless, who felt like there was no way. Like, the only way out is just taking it, like, just killing myself is the only way out. Yeah. But I want to um, further this youth ministry and just showing that, hey, like, you're welcome here. We love you, and we're not here to judge you. Yeah. Because I feel nowadays a lot of people feel like when they go in church, they're getting judged, especially the youth. Mm -hmm. They feel like they can't be themselves. They feel like they got to be something else. When they hear church, they think, oh, I got to dress up as a nun. Like, no, that's not the thing. <laughs> like, you're okay to come this yes. way. So we just want, our vision is just to love these students, the love of God just loving these students, and to further it, it's especially when you get more people, like, because love is contagious. When someone sees, like, how you've been treated and how yeah. you're getting treated, they're going to be like, hey, I want that. Where are you getting that at? Yes. It's like a wildfire. Like, it's just a spark. And so I just want to see this city, not just our youth, but this city, just knowing what the love of God is. That's so good. And, and like, how do you, like, how do you plan on showing that love to this city? Like, do you have any goals in mind or things that you want to do outside of the church yes. walls? I'm excited to hear about it. Share a little bit more in depth on how you plan on showing this city and the, this generation the love of God. I would say my, I have plans of going out of these four walls going into um, parks and just having a service, just having a worship service, or just going out outreaching. Let's go to the skate parks. Let's just go out there and skate. We don't have to preach Jesus. Yeah. Let's just show them, hey, like, we love what you guys are doing here. And we just want to go out there. Even, even if it's like, hey, can we help you move? Things like that. Hey, can, do you need food tonight? Hey, do you need a ride? Hey, like, do you want to go to the game? I could buy your ticket. Stuff like that, I would say, is one of the things. But eventually, I want us to do a whole youth um service at a, a stadium that's i know awesome. it sounds, sounds big like fill it up yeah. i know it sounds big i know like people are like oh like, that's never going to happen but it's okay people hate it on jesus's dreams too but it's okay let your dreams be big that's what god <laughs> wants us to have big dreams that's awesome <laughs> it is totally doable it is we doable. have a god that can do anything exactly. that we think or imagine or dream up that exactly. he gives us the vision for yes you know? right. that's what i want to say like i didn't come up with this god gave it to me so right. that means he wants it to happen and if god could give me a baby when the doctor says it's impossible i'm like what is a stadium that's filled with people exactly exactly that that's sounds true. like winning <laughs> yes. really it does so you know that our the motto in our house the the logo that's everywhere something we say all of the time is winning in life we want to make winners in life right 
So tell me what that, when you hear that statement, what does that mean to you in light of what you're doing in ministry and the youth stuff? What does it mean, winning life to you? Um, I would say it means um, won't quit. It means I won't quit. Whatever, no matter what hardship is happening, no matter what's going on, um, I won't quit because I know I'm winning this at the end. It's kind of like I ran track in cross country, and the first 300 um, meters is easy, but in that last 100 meter where the finish line is right there, for some reason it's always the hardest. It's always like you're tired, you just want to stop. <laughs> yeah. You just want to, your body's like, hey, let's shut it down, let's just relax. But you knowing that, hey, if I push harder and I push faster, I want to get to that line faster. Yeah. So I would say making winners is a, I won't quit. I want to do what it takes. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the circumstances are saying. Because I know once I pass this line, I'm going to be a winner. And so I would say that's what it means to me is a won't quit attitude. So if you were to say anything to the youth out there, whether they're in the ministry, in the church, or outside, and they're interested in coming in, what are some words that you would have for this generation? Obviously, um, Jesus loves you. Um, second, don't forget, like, he is your first love. He is a priority, your foundation. If you're looking for a relationship in a girl or in a guy, first, to build a relationship needs a great foundation, and I would say, Jesus is a perfect foundation for that. Amen. So obviously, like, of course, there's going to be guys dating girls and girls dating guys, but you wait. You wait for the right one, and don't just look for anything that walks or crawls, okay? <laughs> I would say wait for it. Anything that walks or crawls. <laughs> And we Preach. welcome we welcome them into these doors because we have a great time at Heritage Youth, right? Yes. We have rec night. We have rec night. We have fun. We play games. We give things away. I would say if you're looking for a great place, come here. It'll be fun. We won't judge you. We'll love you. We may act crazy, but that's okay. Jesus was crazy to everyone else, <laughs> but he's the one that makes the most sense right now. Yes, you'll definitely have a good time in the joy of the Lord, and you'll experience his love here at Heritage of Faith. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Alex, for taking the time to sit down with us. We're really excited. In the show notes, if you go look, we're going to link all of our Heritage Youth um, social media, the website, all of the things where you can get connected with Pastor Alex and hear more from him. If you have youth, um, if you have kids in your life that you know will be impacted by a message of love and uh, growing in God, then make sure you bring them out to our Heritage Youth Services. It's going to be a really fun time. So again, we'll wrap this up and we hope you listen next time. <laughs>